Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. How Tamworth Country Music Festival, Golden Guitars grew from humble beginnings to be coveted gold as Tamworth celebrates its 50th Country Music Festival. The late Slim Dusty still holds the record for 38 Golden Guitars, an honor he shares with musician Lee Kanagan. But it was Slim's wife Joy McKean who won the very first Golden Guitar in 1973 for writing one of Slim's most iconic songs, Lights on the Hill. The festival's annual Golden Guitar Awards are the highest accolade in Australian country music, and Lights on the Hill was written from Joy's own experience towing a heavy caravan up the then notorious Devil's Pinch Negra on the NSW Northern Tablelands. The trip on the New England Highway on a rainy night was made more difficult because the vehicle's headlight dimmer switch was on the floor near the brake and Joy was restricted to the use of just one foot due to a leg caliper. I do have my high beam on to see where the next turn was, a truck would come over, the hill and I do cop it fair in the eyes, she said. I knew if I took my foot off, the accelerator for too long. To use the dimmer the vehicle would either stall or start slipping back because of the weight of the van. The song came to her in the rhythm of the windscreen wipers and by the time she reached Warwick in southern Queensland it was complete. So many country music songs are stories about life and each year the best of those are celebrated in Tamworth. Plagued by floods, drought, bushfires and most recently a pandemic, the Tamworth Country Music Festival has survived it all to reach 50 events. Humble beginnings the festival evolved almost by accident when radio station 2TM attempted to regain some of the audience it lost to a new rival in the early 1960s. Suddenly, with the introduction of television, the audience evaporated at night, said co-founder Max Ellis. A country music show called Her Down, hosted by John Minson, captured the most attention thanks to the station's unique frequency reach. 2TM was part of a chain of clear channel stations down the east coast of Australia, which had been established by the government as a possible defence asset, so they would have clear communication down the coast, Mr Ellis said. In fact, we even used to get letters from listeners in New Zealand and Vanuatu and places like that, he recalled. Mr. Ellis said artists were quick to tap into this new marketing resource. People like Slim and Joy were very supportive of what we were doing because, for the first time, they felt they had the support of their own media, which was recognizing their ability and their talent, he said. In a 1998 ABC TV interview, the late Slim Dusty recalled those early days of her down hosted by John Minson. He was that fatherly very friendly type bloke and he de interview truck drivers, and they de call in and see him of a night, and he just built up a real big following, Slim said. Eventually, the festival grew out of a few weekend events, and an Australian centenary concert in 1970, but there was not universal support from locals in the early days. Most people in Tamworth left Tamworth. They went to the coast, said Warwick Bennett. Tamworth Mayor from 1979 to 1986. It was stinking hot, you know. A few cowboys came in, the town hall was full and that was about it. In the 1998 interview, Slim Dusty recalled a similar sentiment. I think all towns are the same, they just don't want their peace disturbed with a festival, but millions of dollars roll in now, so you can put up with it, he added. By the mid-80s, the festival was in full swing, a cavalcade had been introduced, and all roads led to Tamworth in festival month, January. Suddenly everywhere you went in the city there was music, people had pockets full of money to come to the festival and people got more involved with it, people didn't tea go away, people made money, Mr Bennett said. Right from the word go, we decided we would look for tangible aspects of country music, that we could reinforce the music part with. Mr. Ellis said. The role of renown was established in 1976, followed by the Hands of Fame Park a year later, and the Big Golden Guitar in 1988. Today the Australasian Country Music Hall of Fame holds country music treasures that bring tourists to the city year-round. Coveted gold as well as being known as Mr. Hadown for his early role in establishing the festival, 
The late John Minson was also the craftsman credited with finessing the now coveted golden guitar statue. The first golden guitars we got were a very rough finish, pitted and not very gold looking at all, Mr. Ellis said. He, John Minson crafted the golden guitars out of the rough casting into the things of beauty that they are today. We have some research that showed back in the early 2000s something like 72% of all adult Australians recognised the Golden Guitar Awards in Tamworth. Lee Kanagan hopes 2022 will be the year that